Bill and Ben were feeling washed off their wheels. The china clay pits where they worked became busier and busier as more people asked for it. All this fuss about a bit of earth, grumbled Bill. Don't know what they see in it. What on earth do they want it for? I'd like to know. His driver laughed. China clay is special, he said. People are finding they can use it in all sorts of things. What sorts of things? demanded Ben. Well, pottery, of course, said Bill's driver. And paper, paints, rubber, plastics, medicines, fertilizers. He paused. Is that all? asked Bill. Good gracious, no, said his driver in surprise. I still haven't mentioned. Stop, pleaded Ben. You're making my head spin. The drivers laughed again and went home to tea. Every day, Donald, Douglas, or Boko came to the station at the end of Edwards Branch Line to collect a trainload of clay freight cars, or hoods, as the men had called them. The first time he came, Boko had wanted to know why. They're full of dried clay, Bill and Ben had explained importantly. The hoods are the pointed covers that keep it dry if it rains. Wet clay is much heavier and has to go in special tank wagons. One day, when Donald arrived, there were more freight cars than he could take in one journey. Boko is following with some more empties, he explained to Bill and Ben. He'll take the rest away for you. And I'm to wait at Edward Station to help him up Gordon's Hill when he pulls them all to the mainland. Donald took as many as he could manage. It might have been better if he had been more cautious. About halfway along the branch line is a passing road. At the bottom of a short but quite steep hill. At the top of the hill, Donald tried to put on his brakes, but the freight cars surged against him. He took him by surprise and gave him a fearful bump. He tried to stop, but as more freight cars ran on the slope of the hill, they pushed harder and harder so that Donald began to get speed. Help! Help! He whistled. Stupid things! Stop pushing! The freight cars took no notice. On! 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 They laughed and pushed harder still. Poor Donald was desperate. Sparks flew from his brake blocks, but he couldn't stop the freight cars. Then he whistled again in alarm, for beyond the loop, coming towards him, he saw Boko with his empty freight cars. Horrors! He whistled. How am I going to stop to let him pass? The two engines reached the loop at the same time, but by now Boko, with the shorter train, was going faster. He hoped so anyway. Whistling desperately, Donald shot past, his driver still fighting to bring the freight cars under control. Boko heard the whistle and gave an answering <laughs> on his horn. Then he noticed the sparks coming from Donald's brakes. Donald's in trouble, he gasped. If he's running away, he'll never be able to stop in the loop, and he'll hit us head on for sure. Boko's driver pushed the throttle wide open. Quick, he said. Our train is short enough for the loop. We don't know about Donald's. We might just make it into our side so that he can have a clear run through. Leaving it as late as he dared, Boko's driver brought him safely to a halt, just as Donald crossed the switches at the other end, missing Boko's brake van by inches. Phew, remarked Boko when he had recovered his breath. That was close. When Boko eventually reached Edward Station with the rest of the clay hoods, Donald was waiting. Thank you for thinking so quickly, he said. You saved a nasty accident. Boko smiled. You had me worried for a bit, he said. Lucky my train was a short one, or I don't know what might have happened. I do, said Donald, but I'd rather not think about it. <laughs> 